Namaste. I am Dr. Anupama Singh, practicing in Boarding Road. I am speaking on behalf of Dharma Vidya and Access to Dermatology World. So in the next few minutes, we'll be talking about atopic dermatitis, also known as atopic eczema, as it is the most common form of eczema. It is a chronic relapsing condition, intensely pruritic, causing inflammation of skin and common both in children and in adults. What is the burden of the disease? The global burden has been increasing and in children, the prevalence is about uh, 10 to 20 percent and in adults, about 3 to 10 percent. And a new cohort, that is patients above 60 years of age, are being afflicted by this disease. Now, it ties with urbanization. It is seen more in urban um, yes. areas like the Western world. But even in developing countries nowadays, it is seen that the prevalence or the incidence of atopic dermatitis is increasing. The clinical features are very common, which we see. Like in mild cases, there may be hypopigmented to mild erythematous patches and barely swollen areas, no oozing and crusting. In moderate cases, there will be dull red areas, slight oozing and crusting and slightly swollen areas. But in severe cases, there are large red patches, papules, vesicles, oozing, crusting and very prominent swollen areas and these lesions are present on widespread area of the body. Now we must know what is the consequence, what are the consequences because uh, young children are afflicted with atopic dermatitis. Other than atopic dermatitis, these patients have allergic conditions like asthma, about 50% of cases, and uh, allergic rhinitis, like in about 70% uh, uh, of cases, and food allergy in 30% of cases. Now, when these occur together with atopic dermatitis, it is known as atopic marsh. And some patients, they may not develop this atopic marsh, but obviously there's a risk of this atopic marsh being coming up. Other than this, so these patients have certain mental issues because the patient is constantly having itching and it, uh, they become very irritable and even they also have pain, unable to sleep at night. And when they go to school, they are unable to concentrate and they function poorly at school. So these patients, they usually have attention deficit Sometimes when the uh, children grow up, they develop uh, depression and anxiety. And the sexual life in adult is also not very good because the scars which are present on the skin, that turns them off from such kind of relationship. So we must keep in mind that this is not just a rash on the skin, but it is skin deep producing a lot of mental health issues. So what are the pathogenetic factors? Again, the cutaneous barrier is impaired because of the mutation in the gene which produces filigrin. Apart from that, there is the immune system is hyper responsiveness and also there is change in the cutaneous mi microbiome leading to inflammation. So we have to or control this inflammation. The patient must be educated about the trigger factors. Now, what are the trigger factors? Again, extremes of condition, like if there is excessive sweating, then also it gets triggered, or if the temperature is very low and dry, then the disease can get triggered. Sometimes stress and at times uh, allergen in the air, then uh, clothes, they also can trigger if the clothes are not of cotton, 
and if some uh, polyester or some synthetic material the child is wearing then that can also trigger the disease and these kind of atopic patients are also sensitive to various drugs so we must be careful always atopic patients have severe drug reaction if they are allergic to it and obviously i have also talked about the food allergy that these patients have now how to control this inflammation first of all we must assess the severity of the disease like i told in the initial part how we have categorized our patients into mild moderate and severe obviously many of the doctors are using score art but this is not very much possible in the busy clinic it takes about 5 to 8 minutes so we can do one thing we can use a tool like investigator global assessment tool at an arm's length we ask we examine our patient who we ask to undress and then we note it down and according to that we can give our treatment we can uh, i just i've told that we educate our patients to avoid trigger and other than this we ask them to take bath with not very hot water because it will strip the moisture off so usually they use cold water or lukewarm water in winter season and the cleanser that they use should not have much of detergent so free cleanser with a balanced ph must be used and soon after a bath a fragrance free moisturizer has to be applied this is known as soak and seal just after a bath we are putting the moisturizer so that the moisture is sealed in this is very helpful and we ask the children to wear full clothes so that the moisture remains there and because of the dryness of the atmosphere it doesn't evaporate very quickly other than this in mild cases we do use topical corticosteroid in moderate to severe cases also we are using topical corticosteroid but in uh, moderate to severe cases we do have to use oral corticosteroid at times and that is why other than corticosteroid sparing drugs are much in vogue so we are also giving uh, patients uh, uh, topical steroid uh, and uh, steroid sparing like rexolitinib and crisoberol now crisoberol is usually recommended in children above 3 months of age and one tactic which will, i will like to share is that during summer season if we are giving crisoberol to our patient it must be kept in the fridge and then it has to be used that will produce a soothing effect and other than crisoberol in children above 12 years of age we are using rexolitinib and even in severe cases other than oral steroid we are using methotrexate azathioprine mycophenolate mofetil and the biologic that is dupilumab which is an IL4 and IL13 inhibitor so like that the controlling of inflammation is not only important but also maintenance of control of inflammation so that is very important and for that we have molecules like crisoberol and rexolitinib though rexolitinib is not easily available in india thank you for more such videos visit or log into dermavidya.com